I couldn't bear the thought of being stuck with a pregnant woman, making me raise the child alone. His eyes showed disgust, but a big smile spread across his face, knowing this day would come. Even though I had seen it coming, I quickly went to my room, returned with some papers, and handed them to Adam. His face twisted in shock. What the hell? What's this all of a sudden? He yelled. Well, it was your idea. Now, sign it quickly. I'll submit it tomorrow, I said firmly. His face turned red with anger as my words hit him hard. Watch closely, I declared. I'll make you regret how you've treated and looked down on me all this time. My name is Rachel. I'm a 31-year-old housewife. Until five years ago, I worked for a big mobile company. I met Adam Johnson, my boss, when I was 26. We quickly fell in love and got married. Adam, who was five years older than me, was very reliable, especially when teaching me the job as a newcomer who didn't know much. I was very grateful for Adam's clear instructions. We became friends and often went out to dinner. When he asked me out, I was thrilled, especially since I had never dated anyone before. It's embarrassing to admit, but as a cartoon enthusiast, I was always more interested in 2D characters than real men. However, seeing my high school and college classmates getting married, I started to feel the pressure. When I fell in love with Adam, I secretly promised myself that he would be my first and last love. So when we started dating and got married a year later, I was overjoyed. I was extremely happy. Adam was good-looking and popular among our female co-workers. I was proud to be his wife, and many congratulated us, saying things like, congratulations, or I'm jealous, but I wish you happiness. I was filled with joy and couldn't imagine what was coming next. You're quitting your job, Adam said. You're married to me now, so you quit your job, right? He informed me the day after we registered our marriage. Adam surprised me with this news. I've always wanted my wife to focus only on the house, Adam said. Don't worry, I can support both of us with my income, he added. But this was so sudden, and he had never mentioned it before. I was shocked. Adam had never talked about me quitting my job before our marriage. I had taken my current job because my father recommended it, and leaving without notice didn't feel right. I wanted to explain this, but the look in Adam's eyes warned me not to argue, so I stayed quiet. I should have told you, but it's done. Starting tomorrow, you don't need to go to work. I'll handle the transition, Adam declared. The news about starting tomorrow was so abrupt it made me feel dizzy, but Adam's words were firm. Since he had been my boss, I felt I couldn't oppose him. Even though I had to leave my job without saying a proper goodbye, I was determined to make our marriage work. Adam had entrusted me with taking care of the house, and I wanted to meet his expectations. I worked hard at household chores, preparing meals, and focusing on Adam's favorites. Although Adam ate without saying anything about the taste, I longed for a word of appreciation. After quitting my job, I felt like no one recognized me anymore. One day, Adam asked, Is my jacket clean? I have an important meeting tomorrow. Yes, of course, I replied, seeing his domineering side with old-fashioned views. I reminded myself how lucky I was to have married him and tried to meet his expectations. With no personal income, I had to rely on Adam for everything. Our relationship often felt more like that of an employer and housemaid than a husband and wife. Our married life was generally smooth until one day when I fell ill and couldn't get out of bed. I felt very tired and weak, thinking I would catch up on housework the next day. Adam entered the bedroom and angrily asked, What are you doing? Get up and make some food, as he kicked the blanket off me. I'm sorry, I'm feeling unwell. Can you manage something for yourself today? I explained, hoping for understanding. Instead of nodding or comforting me, Adam frowned and said, You don't work, yet you're lying down just because you feel a bit sick. Pathetic? Get up, and kicked me again. The day Adam came home after midnight was the day I chose to share some news. However, when he entered, the smell of alcohol made me feel nauseous. His face was flushed and he staggered as he walked. 
It was surprising how much he had drunk, especially without notifying me, even though I had prepared dinner. I stood in disbelief. I got up from the bed, never thinking he would demand housework from his sick wife. I had never imagined he could be like this before we got married. Maybe it was my fault for not seeing it, but it was just too much. I found myself doing chores while tears ran down my face. Several days passed, and my health didn't get any better. Then I realized I had missed my period. Panicking, I rushed to the drugstore to buy a pregnancy test. When I tried it, the result was positive. Tears of joy flowed naturally, and I decided to share the news with Adam when he got home from work. My spirits were lifted instantly. The day Adam came home after midnight was the day I chose to share the news. But when he walked in, the smell of alcohol made me feel sick. His face was flushed, and he staggered as he walked. I was surprised by how much he had drunk, especially since he hadn't told me he would be out drinking, even though I had prepared dinner. Eager to share my pregnancy news, I told my intoxicated husband, I haven't been to the doctor yet, so it's not confirmed, I began eagerly. However, Adam's face darkened as he responded, A child? What have you done? His tone was harsh, unlike anything I had ever heard from him before. I don't want a child. Damn, this is the worst. If you're going to have it, raise it yourself, he said. His cruel words shocked me. He rudely stripped off his clothes and headed to the bathroom. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't understand why he would say such irresponsible things about our baby instead of being happy. The joy I had felt moments ago was immediately replaced with deep sorrow. Why would he say such things? He had never mentioned not wanting children before. We hadn't even been using contraception, so I naturally thought we both wanted children. As I hung Adam's jacket and was about to take his shirt to the washroom, I noticed something else. A piece of paper had slipped out from the pocket of his dress shirt. I could tell it was a receipt because of its texture. At first, I thought it was just a receipt from tonight's gathering and was about to throw it away. But then I saw the name of the place. Is this a motel? My hand trembled as I held the receipt. It was indeed a motel. The shock of this discovery weighed heavily on my heart. Why doesn't Adam love me? Isn't marriage supposed to be between two people who love each other? We've only been married for just over a year, how could this be? I have been lost in imaginary romances for years, never really experiencing a true relationship. I couldn't accept this harsh reality right away, but the idea of Adam cheating started to make sense, and everything began to fall into place. Had Adam been using me from the start of our marriage? Was he truly in love with the person he was cheating with while I was just a convenient housekeeper? These doubts swirled in my mind. Was that why he reacted so harshly when he found out I was pregnant? As I struggled with these thoughts, Naza set in, and I became convinced something was wrong. Yes, there was no doubt now, maybe the reason he made me quit my job was because his mistress worked there. Everything started to make sense, as if he had married me for stability, not love. The line between reality and my imagination became blurry, but I couldn't deny the cruel words he had said after learning about my pregnancy. That day, I decided to gather evidence of Adam's cheating. From then on, his cold behavior toward me was undeniable. It was as if he couldn't forgive me for getting pregnant. Even though he knew I was suffering from morning sickness, he would deliberately eat smelly foods near me and criticize my housework, forcing me to redo tasks. My pregnant body had to endure a lot, and my heart felt heavy. Despite this, I continued to investigate his affair. Adam never let go of his cell phone, even taking it with him to the bathroom, making it impossible for me to sneak a look. When I secretly checked Adam's room, it was always neat and tidy, with nothing incriminating in sight. He was meticulous at work, and his desk was always in perfect order. I realized it would be challenging to catch him off guard directly. I often checked Adam's pockets for evidence like receipts, but my investigation was difficult. 
I thought about hiring a detective but didn't have the money. While I was deep in thought, I received an unexpected phone call from my father. Hello, it's me, your dad. How are you? He asked. Surprised by his call, given his busy schedule, I replied, Dad, what's going on? Aren't you busy with work? My employees have been doing well, so I'm not that busy, he explained. My father, the CEO of a company in Italy, was always a workaholic. I didn't have many childhood memories of playing with him, but I respected his dedication to his job. His unexpected call left me curious about the reason. So what's happening? I asked. My father then revealed a shocking truth. Is that really true? I asked in disbelief. Yes, he's not the type to lie. I want you to believe me, my father reassured me. Initially in shock and unable to respond, I felt a mix of anger and frustration as the pieces of the puzzle came together. Thank you, Dad. I'll do my best, I replied. I thanked him before hanging up the phone. My investigation was finally paying off, but the new information also made me feel angry and frustrated. The tension between Adam and me continued to grow, and even though I was pregnant, Adam remained distant. Every time he acted this way, I felt a deep hatred towards him. Months passed and our relationship stayed strained. Eventually, something happened that changed everything. At nine months pregnant, I was always careful around Adam, living in constant fear. I tried to avoid him, leading a quiet and stifled life. One day, I cooked dinner as usual. When Adam came home, we sat at the dining table. As I quietly ate, Adam suddenly slammed his fork down. What is this? It's tasteless, he exclaimed, throwing the food I had prepared onto the floor. I was shocked by his outburst and tried to understand what had just happened. The anger at seeing the meal I had cooked discarded right in front of me started to build up inside. I've noticed you've been complaining about the taste of the meals recently, I said. Adam criticized my cooking, saying it was bland. Since becoming pregnant, I had been using less seasoning to make healthier meals. This was only temporary until the baby was born. If he found the food plain, he could have added some salt himself. Why did he have to throw it on the floor? I was about to argue when Adam sneered and said hurtful words. I don't want a woman with a belly like a monster. You'll have to raise the kid by yourself, he said, looking at my swollen belly with a nasty smile. I had always feared this day might come, even though I hoped for a different outcome. Quickly, I went to my room, grabbed a document, and returned to Adam. Fine, here are the divorce papers, I said, pushing the papers in front of him. Adam's face twisted in shock. What the hell? What's this all of a sudden, he stammered. Well, it was your idea. Now sign it quickly. I'll submit it tomorrow, I responded. The truth was, I had been thinking about divorce ever since I began suspecting Adam of cheating. However, with a child on the way, I wasn't sure if I could support myself. But now, I had a different plan in mind. My determination seemed to provoke Adam. His face turned red with anger. Just watch. I'll make you regret every moment you looked down on me and tried to control me. Do you think you can survive without me? You have a baby to care for, and you'll regret this, he threatened. But my resolve was firm. I wasn't going to back down. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me, I assured Adam. Maybe irritated by my confidence, he snatched the divorce papers and started filling in the blanks. Here you go. If this is what you wanted, it's yours, he said. Thank you, I responded. Adam probably didn't believe I would actually submit the divorce papers as he handed them over without any fuss. The next day, I submitted the divorce papers and left the house. I knew he would be surprised when he came home from work and found out. After that, I moved to my parents' home, mostly because my father had returned to the Australia from Italy and suggested that I stay with them. It was the right decision at the time. I was tired of my life with Adam and deeply thankful to my father. On the day I left our home, Adam called me five times, but I ignored all his calls. Eventually, he stopped calling, which made it clear that I didn't mean much to him. 
he was probably happy with his mistress and might even remarry soon. I decided to move on from Adam. Seven months passed, and I had my baby, who was born safely. I was now living happily with my parents and my baby. While I was enjoying this peaceful life with my family, Adam called again. I ignored his calls at first, but after several persistent attempts, I finally answered. Hello, what do you want now? I asked, wary of his tone. Hey, what's going on? Why were you on that show? And since when were you the daughter of a CEO with millions of dollars? I never knew that. Adam's voice was full of surprise and anger. It turned out that Adam had seen a TV show that aired after I returned to my family home. I had been featured on the show because of my father's role as the CEO of a well-known global tech company. The show highlighted the lavish lifestyle of the CEO's family, and during the interview, they mentioned our family's wealth, estimating it at around $40 million. I never expected Adam to see that show, but the power of television is incredible. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you that I have an asset of $50 million due to an early inheritance. That's why I was able to divorce you, I said. Yes, my father had informed me about the inheritance, which gave me the confidence to live comfortably even after divorcing you. Upon hearing this, Adam's reaction was immediate, and he was furious. What? That's not fair. Why didn't you tell me about this before? Half of it is mine, right? Give me the money now, he demanded. I calmly replied, just as I thought, after seeing the show, all you could think about was getting money from me. Gifts from parents aren't included in property division. Are you forgetting your own mistakes? Adam seemed confused and asked, What are you talking about? I continued, I'm tired of your anger, Adam. You called me, so you should know you can't blame me for what you did. You cheated, didn't you? With your new wife, who's a junior from your company. You started dating her even before our marriage. Adam was clearly shocked by the information I had from my father. I finally had the upper hand. Did you think I wouldn't find out? My father has many contacts in your company, and one of them told me about your affair. I've never mentioned it, but I will be demanding child support. Still in denial, Adam protested. Stop joking. Why should I pay child support? It's all because of you, right? You got pregnant on your own and slacked off with household chores. It's all your fault. Hearing Adam blame me without apologizing for his own mistakes was unbelievable. I couldn't believe I was ever married to someone so lacking in common sense. I knew then that leaving him was the right decision. Adam continued, I'm broke. My wife spent all the money I earned, and now I'm in debt, he pleaded. Hearing his pathetic excuse, my anger turned into sheer disbelief. I never wanted to deal with such an unreasonable person again. With that thought, I firmly gripped my phone and said, What are you talking about? Do you even realize how ridiculous you sound? I never want to deal with you again. I'll have my lawyer handle the child support. Don't ever call me again, and you will not see the child anymore. Goodbye? Hey, wait, he called out, but I quickly hung up the phone. Afterward, I blocked Adam's number and took a deep breath. It's over now, right? No more calls from Adam, I thought. I no longer wanted him disrupting my peaceful life. Just then, I heard my baby crying from the other room and rushed to soothe the baby. In the end, Adam started paying child support every month. According to a former colleague, the woman he remarried was quite a spendthrift, and he had to cover his living expenses with debt. It seemed that because of these circumstances, Adam had tried to get a share of my inheritance by calling me. However, Adam didn't get a single penny from me. Now, his expenses were more than his income, and he was struggling. Whether it was because he felt his life was falling apart, or he couldn't stand being looked down upon by his colleagues, things only got worse for him. He made the mistake of starting his job search only after leaving his current company, which forced him into a life of poverty. Hearing this from a colleague didn't affect me at all. I thought he deserved every bit of the hardship. The harsh words and cold behavior he showed me will never fade from my memory. I sincerely hope he gets what he deserves. 
Meanwhile, I'm enjoying being a parent with the help of my parents. My baby is growing up healthy and happy. I feel supported and loved in my family's home, and I no longer have to worry about money. My father, who is a successful CEO, mentioned that he wants to pass the company on to me. This news was both surprising and motivating. I realized that I needed to prepare myself for the responsibilities that come with running a company. My father has always been a hardworking man, and I want to make him proud, so I started learning more about the business, taking on small tasks to understand how things work. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined to succeed. Living with my parents has given me a chance to rebuild my life. I feel more confident and ready to face the future. My father's belief in me has inspired me to aim high. He believes in my abilities, and that belief has become a source of strength for me. Every day, I work on balancing my role as a mother with my preparations to take over the company. It's challenging, but I find joy in every moment. My baby's laughter and my parents' support keep me going. I am grateful for this second chance at life, away from the toxic relationship with Adam. I often reflect on my past with Adam. His betrayal and cruelty hurt deeply, but they also taught me valuable lessons about strength and self-worth. I have grown from that experience and come out stronger. Now, I am focused on building a bright future for myself and my child. The pain of the past is slowly fading, replaced by the hope and excitement of what lies ahead. I am determined to create a happy and stable life for my child, and with my family by my side, I know I can achieve anything I set my mind to. Looking back, I see that leaving Adam was the best decision I ever made. It allowed me to find myself again and to discover my true potential. I am no longer the scared, uncertain person I once was. I am a strong, capable woman, ready to take on the world. I hope Adam understands the consequences of his actions. As for me, I will keep moving forward, taking advantage of every opportunity that comes my way, and making the most of each day. I am ready for whatever the future brings, confident that I can handle any challenge.